Former trainer and chief cheerleader of Tyson Fury, Ben Davison, spoke to Sun Sport regarding AJ. He gave five names who he thinks Joshua should approach for sparring ahead of the Tyson Fury fight. Let's check him out. Ivan Dashko. Ivan Dashko is a six foot nine Kazakh heavyweight, nine and zero in the professional ranks. He boxes in USA at the moment, and he fought Joshua in the Olympics. He lost to Joshua in the Olympics. He fought um, Joe Joyce in Rio. He lost to Joe Joyce, I think, in the semis in Rio. He beat a Jagba in Rio. He's fought everyone. He's fought every like everyone who's anyone in the pro games today back in in his, in his amateur days he was a pretty good am amateur he's, i think he has an amateur record of about six to six wins and about maybe 10 losses or so 10 to 12 losses or so so daishko is six foot nine he's a, he's a boxer he can move he can you know mimic what um, what tyson fury does daishko at six nine happens to be the same height as tyson fury so that alone with his amateur pedigree his olympic pedigree makes him a standout candidate boxes out of an orthodox stance as far as i know he doesn't switch here as tyson fury does and yeah what do you guys make of dice call let us know in the comment section below is it a good choice or not the nordic nightmare robert helenius the guy that robbed Derek Sejora back in the days as well after getting embarrassingly knocked out by what many consider to be the softest man in the division in Gerald Washington, Robert Hellenius is experiencing some of a purple patch after knocking out prospect Adam Babyface Karnaki last year in New York. 37 years of age now, Hellenius is Swedish. He's 6 foot 7 or 6 foot 6 depending on who you want to believe. And he's been boxing since he was 5 years old. He doesn't box anything like Tyson Fury in my opinion but what he does do is he boxes and he moves. Keeping in mind when you want to select a sparring partner they don't exactly have to be a mirror mirror what the fighter you're going to face does. It doesn't have to be the exact carbon copy of Tyson Fury. With that being said, Hellenius as a sparring partner for Joshua ahead of the Fury fight. What do you make of that? Good or not? Let us know in the comment section below. A decent choice or not? In my opinion it's a decent choice experienced boxer puncher why not Otto Valin as you can see there former sparring partner Joshua's I think he's sparred Joshua about three times for like about three two to three different camps so far um so yeah there's some familiarity there and Valin obviously as we all know boxed Tyson Fury what was it last year or two years ago gave Tyson, Tyson Fury a run for his money gave him that business I don't, I don't see too many people speak speaking on this. But if you watch that fight, Otto Valin actually hurt Tyson Fury with a jab. So yeah, keep that in mind. <laughs> and also cut his eye with a left hook. So yeah, Valin's a decent, decent, decent fighter. Um, I didn't think much of him from what what I'd seen prior to the Fury fight, but he really, really, really impressed in the Fury fight. So yeah, Southpaw, six foot six. Um, 30 years of age can box a bit not 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 as great a, a boxer as Fury is but yeah he can box if I was in that Joshua team Valen would be top priority to bring him to camp in preparation for the Fury fight what do you guys make of that again thoughts in the comment section below I mean the footwork a light he glided around that ring hitting him with jabs at will touching him explosive with it it was like shades of Ali the way he was moving Huey Fury, six foot six, switch hitter, can box, can fight, one of the best movers in the division in my opinion. One drawback though, his cousin's Tyson. <laughs> so that probably is never gonna happen. If you remember when um there was one time when Peter Fury and who was it? Uh, Peter Fury and Mick Hennessy went to visit David Hayes gym and Tyson posted a crazy caption on Instagram saying they've betrayed him and all of that, so we, would, we wouldn't want further betrayals taking place, so Fury, um, Huey is probably not going to be helping Joshua prepare to fight Tyson. That's probably not going to happen. Even though we don't think they're in speaking terms, that's um, Huey and Tyson and Peter and, and John Fury being Tyson's dad. I don't think they're in speaking terms, but yeah, they probably will not be helping Joshua prepare. Although I feel this will be um, probably a better fit than Otto Valin. 
to me, this would be number one for the Battle of Valen. What do you guys make of this? Let us know in the comment section below. David Price. To be honest, with this one, I think Ben Davidson was just trying to fill the quota there. They probably told him, just, hey, give us five names. He only had about three or two. And he said, you know what? I'm a chuck in Pricey, you know, he's big enough. So yeah, I'm going to put Price name in it. Because I don't see how how um, Joshua benefits from sparring David Price ahead of the fight. Just the only thing is just the hype. But this, in this day and age, every other boxer is... is Every other heavyweight is six five plus, you know. So Ben Davidson just threw in a random name. I don't think he gave you much thought. Although I do think Pricey has some underrated boxing skills, but he's not as elusive as the other guys on this list. He's too available to get hit. That's not what Tyson Fury's game is all about. But maybe I'd have to hear Ben Davidson explain it further for it to make sense to me. Or if you guys can see where Dave is coming where Ben is coming from let us know in the comment section below so yeah five heavyweights that should join the Joshua camp ahead of the Fury fight according to ex-trainer of Tyson Fury Ben Davidson what do you guys make of his five who would you add remove who is your favorite who is your least favorite what made sense what didn't make sense to you who's a no-brainer who who do you feel who wasn't mentioned in this list that you think is a no-brainer Moving on from that, to most people in America, to most American boxing fans, Gerald Anderson is their most promising heavyweight prospect and he goes up against Kingsley Ibe this coming Saturday on, on top rank in the bubble. Another guy who came into the sport late, 27 years of age, I believe he's only been boxing for about 2-3 to three years at the most. For someone that's been boxing for such a little amount of time, he's been really impressive. Now he's about to face his third undefeated prospect in a row. He's 5 and 1 with one draw. That draw being a, a controversial draw. I actually do believe he won that fight against Guido Vianello, an Italian heavyweight, Italian American heavyweight. Is he American? I'm not even sure. It's, let's just go with Italian, an Italian heavyweight. I believe Ibe won that fight. He was boxing beautifully against Ibe, who against um, Vianello, who's who has an amateur background, a decent amateur background. Ibe doesn't have any amateur bouts. He started pro, like I said, late in his twenties. So he's been showing good form so far in his pro career. And yeah, they don't want to let this guy rest. They're giving him his third prospect in a row, Jared Anderson. Ibe, as far as I'm concerned, has been brought to lose. He's been brought as an opponent several times now first in the bubble was brought to fight um a guy called Malata, i believe he knocked him out and then they set him up against guido vianello a couple months later maybe about two three months later he beat this guy up he blooded his eye cut his eye and then they gave it a draw in the end because he was gassing if i, if I remember correctly he doesn't have a great engine and he was gassing towards the end but he did win that fight as for Anderson, he's 6'4", 7-0 as a pro, all 7 by knockout. He hasn't really fought anyone per se, but the best you can find in his, in, in his record is um, Rodney Hernandez, who's fought several several prospect level heavyweights. And you name him, Hernandez has fought. He's, he's gone the distance with most of them as well. He went the distance with Kajanu, went the distance with Michael Hunter, went the distance with Karnaki, Sergei Kuzmin. Um, Zili Zhang. Zili Zhang, I don't really rate that much, but he went the distance with him too. He fought Joey De Waco twice, who's a journeyman slash gatekeeper, whatever you want to call him. He drew with De Waco the first time, and then he 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 lost the next the uh, the second fight they had. Um, yeah, so he's be, he's been in good company, Hernandez. He he he's losing this fight, but he's going the distance with good 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 opposition. He got knocked out by a Jaguar. He beat Laron Mitchell, who was a a prospect. That's Hernandez. That is, he beat. So if you, if you're a prospect and you know about your game, he's gonna beat you. This Hernandez guy, but Jared Anderson, he knocked him out in four rounds. But Coley also knocked him out in two rounds. But yeah, Hernandez is there to find you out. So for Jared Anderson not to get found out by him, that's 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 a good sign. This fight is gonna tell us a lot about him as well. 
So I'm really looking forward to this one this weekend on ESPN. Well, I'm in the UK, so I am watching ESPN, but yeah, I'm gonna be watching the fight nonetheless. So yeah, let me know what you think of everything I mentioned in this video. Leave your thoughts in your comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'm out.